anymore. You ain't going to listen to me. Matter of fact, you're going to attack me. Because I'm trying to hold up a standard to help our children. And you go, what? And now all your kids gone. Your church dried up. Kanye came in, got the musicians. He got the singers. And he got all your youth because you took them to his concert. And he said boldly Saturday, I am a God. I'm my own God. You know, it's another thing I don't like in Christianity, the fear of God. If God is love, why should you fear him? Because you place one fear, you get another fear, you get another fear. What do you have at that point? You're easily controllable because you have this fear like everybody going to die eventually. But I'm going to live my entire life with zero fear because I'm God. And anyone to disagree, I'm the God of me. And you can't tell me who I am. I can't tell y'all. I could tell y'all. It's y'all job to listen. I told you he said that. Four years ago. We can go back further than that, Jay Bryant. Part seven of the truth behind hip hop, Mother All Gods. That's 2013. Yeah. Yeah. So we ain't doing it in here. Amen. Amen. We're going to protect our children even from themselves. So when you don't feel like coming, get up and come. Because you're coming anyway. If you eat my food, if you're using my air condition, you're going to come. And you're going to learn what the what thus saith the Lord about your life. We're going to protect you from yourself, from your attitude, from your own issues. We're going to protect you. Because that's our job as parents. That's who we are. I'm telling you, if you don't stand up now, It'll be too late later. Now I'm getting all the emails and all the, mm, you was right. Shut up. You was wrong. Send me that. Don't tell me I was right because I know I was right. I don't want to hear that. Text me and tell me how wrong you were and how stupid you look and how the egg is on your face and how your kids are gone. Good luck trying to get them back. First, one of the first children books we read was the Pride Piper. You don't know that story. It was the parents that made the deal with the Piper. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I, I almost stopped praise and worship. I said, "Give me the microphone. <laughs> Stop the music." Stop, I mean, come on now. This is, this is just out of pocket. And, and Evelyn is my witness. Before Kanye said a word, I did this message and sent it to her. So I had no idea I was going to be dealing with this for that reason. Because I found out all of this Saturday. Because he did the interview. When did he do the interview? Friday? Yeah, and I talked to Jay Bryan Saturday. And we, I mean, it's it just, it's unreal. Got a mouth full of something, look like nickels. Man, he talking and just, it's just so demonic. You can just see the devil just happy. I fooled the church. You know, the world didn't buy it. The world didn't buy it. Just the church. So he did his Sunday services and guess who was in the audience? Youth groups. No matter what city he went to, churches packed their kids up to go hear Kanye West. Amen. So I'm telling you what the standard is in here. That's it. Amen. 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 Make your kids come to these youth classes, come to these youth functions, and what we're up here doing for the youth for their benefit. We're trying to help them. So that's not optional, and you don't pull them out. You gonna pull yourself out of service? I mean, what are you doing? It's church. They 
in trouble, they need to be in the youth group. They getting in trouble, they need to be under the word. This is church. This ain't no basketball team. Don't pull them out and bench them. This is church. We work on them. We pray for them. We help them out of their situations. Just like you needed help. Just like we all needed help. We all needed the prayers of the saints. We all needed the unified body of believers. Amen. So get mad if you want to. I'm talking to you. If you're mad, I'm talking to you. And I'm telling you what you're not going to do. Amen. Amen. Because, uh, amen, when God come to me, I'm going to say, God, I told him. I just began to break down and worship before the Lord yesterday for just, just, just thank you for giving me the truth about this situation. So I could warn some of your people, the ones that would hear. And it ain't easy going against the whole world all the time. It's not easy, but sometimes you got to stand by yourself and proclaim what does say at the Lord. I remember when all that was going down, I felt like Micaiah. I was like, God, every other prophet I know, close friends, all of them, God is using them. God called them. They having dreams and visions of what God is going to do with Kanye West. They ain't going to listen to me, but they'll hear it from him. That's, that's who y'all want to preach the truth to you? Him and Cat Williams? That's who the, the black folks? Well, Lord, that got close. That's who the Negroes? Those are the, that's the prophet for the Negroes? Kanye and Cat? Those are the preachers? Amen. Look at somebody and say, lying spirits. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash lying spirits. Lying spirits. Here we go. Jesus will work this verse out in us this year and worship and winning souls will go hand in hand. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say this, you will find worship on the radio in the UK and there will be a number one hit, a number one, hear me, this is the word of the Lord, a number one hit that is a praise song. You watch it and then you email me when it happens. There is an extraordinary anointing, not like we have seen before, that will come to you in worship. So God is in the number one hits now. Yeah. <laughs> number two. Let me say this to you also, man, that God passed the time. He's, the Lord says, I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about your future. And you will say, God, how can I do this and how can I do that? For he said, I am opening up doors for you in the secular arena. And he is saying, I'm going to cause you to make music for those in other genres. And the Lord says, I'm causing your catalog to begin to expand. For I'm thinking about your tomorrow. And he says, and when it is time for you to retire, and it is time for you to sit down, the Lord said, I have already grabbed your future, and I hold it in my hand. And the Lord said, you will live from your gift, what you produce in these days, says the Lord. Somebody ought to shout in this place. Well, the prophets are stirred up. Foolishness. God's going to use you in the secular arena that the devil owns. And you're going to write secular hits that are, that's going to financially sustain you. You know, you got to be leery. When they prophesy about money, you know why they're doing it, right? Because they want some. When you come into your kingdom, remember me. Last one. 
door being opened, but I didn't see you walking in it. Prophesy. Sometimes a prophet can declare a word in your life, but because of nope again sacrifice nah. and obedience. Prophet. Sometimes you still stay stagnant until, and then I find you in the same situation. Mm. Prophesy. Hmm. Prophesy. Prophesy, Mama. Go deeper. I'm going to declare a word over your life. Amen. For you not to walk single for too long. Amen. Prophesy. Because I'm here to declare marriage. Prophesy. I want you to receive your marriage breakthrough right now in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, the grace that's upon my life, God has given me keys. To be able to give people keys so that they're able to open themselves into a new, a new. I want you to be able to give birth Amen. to receive. something called relationship. You don't Amen. give birth to me. And for that relationship to go into marriage. I receive. And for that marriage to turn into now you having beautiful kids. I receive. But there's contracts that I need to break. Amen. Prophesy. Huh? You knew Prophesy. this was coming. It's okay? Yes. Can Go I deeper. break it? Yes. Go deeper. Yes. Yes. She said yes. You heard her, right? <laughs> Prophesy. Contracts are made with a sacrifice. There's a sacrifice being made against you and your family. Prophesy. But when you come and make a covenant with God now and you make your own sacrifice. Prophesy. You're saying release something, but you have nothing in your hands to sacrifice. So what are you going to sacrifice to God? Amen. For me to break every altar that has been speaking against your family. To, for me to break every altar that is saying she will move forward. She will not be happy. She will be in a place of loneliness. She will may be married, but she won't stay married. There's a contract that is being written that you sleep, then there's visitations. You sleep, there's torment, dreams. Mm. Prophesy. Mm. Are you here? Yes. Prophesy. You want me to say it in your ears? Yes. <laughs> Listen, what you're going through, a lot of women are going through right now. I am praying for her as I, I am prophesying receive. over her life. I receive. There's altars that are being broken right I now in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive. Amen. But I don't want you to come here empty handed. Mm. If there are people that say there's an altar that is fighting my family. I know there's an altar that is saying she can't get married. There's an altar that says she can't give birth. Physical baby, you can't, you can't, give, you can't get pregnant. You try. There's barrenness. Physically and spiritually. If you are here, I want you to. Sow a seed. I want you to have a sacrifice in your hands. Are you here? Are you here? A sacrifice. Hannah had to sacrifice something. Are you with me? Amen. What did Hannah sacrifice? Papa said what? He just called me and said, for everybody to connect to the word that you just said, he said, have mama. Tell everybody to sow a seed for exactly what you said, word for word. And he said, of $1,500 to connect to this word and then bless them and pray for them. Amen. 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 That church got some bi-dynamics bi going on, buddy. That's expensive. Y'all, this is insane. But it's people surrounding themselves with what they want to hear. That's what an itching ear is. See his ear? His ear is itching. Because this pastor is not preaching a message. He's giving a massage in his ear. Tickling his ear. And he's looking like, ooh, keep doing that. Yeah, that's where we are. But there's a reason people surround themselves with this. You know, when we come, when you come and hear a word that might cut you on a Sunday, and you have a feeling it might cut you on a Sunday, and many Sundays, most Sundays, something in the word might cut you. But the unction of the Holy Ghost tells you, go anyway. 
because the Bible is a two-edged sword. So it ain't just cutting you, it's cutting anybody that touches it, right? So when those things are going on, we just push through and say, hey, if God got a word for me, I just got to go get it. Because I'd rather God, because if God cuts me and he loves me and he made me, if he made me, he can perform surgery on me without hurting me. So I'm going to trust God's surgical procedure over consequences. Consequences hurt. And they don't care about you. So I'm going to trust God's rebuke. Well, when you're willing to do that, then you're able to hear truth and accept it. But when you've arranged your life in a way, let's say you are a lesbian and you have a, a, a stud as a husband. Uh, yeah. That's the more manly looking one. You have one of those. You can go to old Joel Osteen's church and enjoy all his devotionals and lift your hands and sing worship. Right? Because he's going to say things that you want to hear. But if you come in here, you got about one hour. (laughs) Before you start feeling some kind of way. First thing is you're going to come in here and you're going to see men with women. Right? Then you're going to see a whole bunch of men's. Right? Then you're going to see men that look like men and women that look like women. That's going to make you very uncomfortable. It don't have to be extreme as that. It could just be a relationship in your house where the woman is in charge. You're not going to be here long because we preach the opposite of that. We preach that the man is the head of the woman as Christ is the head of the church. So no matter how you roll your eyes, smack your lips, and all them sounds you can make, you can't manipulate your husband into getting what you want. We consider that manipulation, that's witchcraft, that's Jezebel, right? So we preach that here in the church because when it's time for the blessings to come to your house or time for a word from the Lord to come to you, you need your house in order so you can hear it. Because God has not given it to the woman for the home if you there. So, that's why you have to make sure you're lining up with what is being said so that you can hear what is being said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the pastors, I took it personally, but they couldn't listen to me about Kanye because their musician plays secular music on the weekend. So, you ain't going to stand up to him because you ain't having church without your music. Or they're not going to listen to me because their kids are heavy into secular music. You see what I'm saying? So the truth came as a warning, but you couldn't hear it. You have to surround yourself with these kind of prophets that I just showed you. Because they're going to come prophesy and get you paid. Can I keep preaching? When a person is content being out of God's order, they do not like to hear from those that proclaim truth. So once you settle in being out of order, you know you out of order. Once you good with being in sin or being out of order, then you're not going to want to hear what I got to say. Because I'm going to preach God's order. Yeah, you'll avoid me when it's convenient. When it's not, because I'm going to preach when it's convenient and when it's not, like the Bible tells me. Amen. I can't can't worry about how it affects you and how it makes you feel. I can't do that. I have to say what the Lord tells me to say. 2 Timothy 4 and 3 says, for the time will come when they will not, what? Sit through, endure, sound doctrine. But after their own lust, meaning what they want to do themselves, how their homes are arranged. But they've decided they're going to go and select some teachers that's got this feather. 
Yeah. To massage their ears and make them feel good about where they are. They will select the voices that agree with their disorder just to hear what they want to hear. Second Timothy, the next verse says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto lies. 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 Ahab, y'all remember him? King of Israel, Ahab hated the prophet Micaiah. Because he would only say what thus saith the Lord. Ahab had 400 plus, probably more than that, prophets on staff. All getting paid. I wonder what they getting paid to tell the king. Whatever he want to hear. But the one that wasn't getting paid, he didn't like him. <laughs> Amen. Oh, this is a good story right here. Ahab, king of Israel, was just sitting around and said to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, come go with me to Ramoth Gilead. And uh, the king's uh, account of this, uh, first king's account of this, he said, um, it belongs to us. So he's saying, it belongs to us. We just have to go get it. So, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, won't you come with us and let's go take Ramoth Gilead? And the king answered him and said, I'm with thou, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in war. Let's go. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. So, let's ask God what he thinks before we go do this. Man, just think if you had asked God before you did what you did, you wouldn't have lost that battle. Yeah. And many times it wouldn't have put you in the position where you can't hear truth now because truth affects too much now. Guys tell me all the time, man, I, I signed a record deal. I don't know what to do. I said, walk away with it. Oh, I can't. It's a deal. It's a contract. Well, then go to hell. I mean, what do you want me to tell you? You got two. Yes, sir. Look at somebody. He really mad. He cuss it. No, go to ATLF, the real hell, hot hell, fire, devil, pitchfork. That hell. I mean, that ain't cussing. You sign a record deal, you either quit doing the music or you going to hell. I don't care what the contract say, but see, you didn't seek the Lord before the contract. Now you done got off into something that's going to take you to hell. I'm a Freemason. Well, denounce the Freemasons, man. They're going to cut my tongue off. I'd rather be walking around than be in hell. Because in hell, you're going to grow that tongue back and be hollering. Keep my tongue. Now what if the three Hebrew boys had said that? Man, we're going to throw you in the fiery furnace if you don't bow down. They was like, throw us in. They said, because God can handle that fire. He can handle that furnace. But even if he can't and we all burn up, let it be known that I did not bow to your false God. I will not bow to your false God. Talking about a record deal. So, Joseph has said, man, let's, let's ask the Lord. Let's inquire of the Lord. So, the king said, oh, well, we can do that because I got 400 prophets. So let me go get them and we're going to ask them. Hey, prophets, shall we go? Hey, paid staff, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall we, or shall I forbear? Or shall I chill out and not go? And they said, go up, for God will deliver it 
into the king's hand. It's 400 of them, so that's probably what it sounded like. 400. That's a lot of yeses. But Jehoshaphat was like, wait a minute. Something about this is not right. They all sung in the same key and everything. Wait a minute. Something. Something. He said, so is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides these dudes you paid? That we might inquire of him? King of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, well, there is yet one man. There's one. That, look at somebody and say, I want to be that one. I'm telling you, y'all, it hurts, it's hard, all of that. But I want to be, phew. he said, yeah, there's one, only one, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. Why you hate him, Ahab? Because he never prophesies good to me. <laughs> well, maybe you ain't doing good. You just called him a prophet of the Lord. So if every time he comes, he finds something wrong, maybe you in the wrong. He said, I hate him. You hate the prophet from the Lord? Yes, yes, I hate him. For he never prophesies good unto me, but always evil. Always? The same as Makai. Uh, Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, look, man, let not the king say such things. You shouldn't be talking like this. You're a king, dude. These folks watching you. <laughs> Sometimes we are fighting losing battles because we did not seek the truth prior to engaging. Yeah, Jehoshaphat was like, look, before we do this, we need to hear the truth. Yeah, and don't be scared of the truth. Sometimes you gotta hear the truth and change your plans. You had big plans, big plans. Remember I was in Nashville and I was with some artists. Was you there, Elder? Elder was with me, and Tanya was with me. We was in Nashville getting ready to sign. This record deal with the largest Christian record company in the, in, in the world at the time. It's getting ready to sign this deal. Dude sat us down, told us, you know, this, that, this, blah, 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 blah. Man, we just, you know, we, 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 we're going to do it. And this is, you know, all you got to do is sign on dotted line or whatever, whatever. I said, well, man, I, I got to go and pray about this. And everybody that was with me didn't like me anymore. They all felt like Ahab. We don't like him because we know what he's about to do. I went home, called him back. No, I did not told him while we was there. <laughs> yeah, because we were there for a couple days. I told him the next day. I said, God said no. They looked at me and everybody that was with me, all the artists, everybody, they was like, we hate you. You just blew it for everybody. And I said, I'm sorry. That's what God said. I had to turn it down. Remember that? Some of them didn't speak to me for years. Yeah. But didn't know nothing about EX Ministries, Truth on I didn't know any of that at the time. I just knew at that moment God spoke to me and told me, don't sign that deal. That's all I knew. And so I had to, and I didn't have no money. They brought us down there. I didn't have no money. I needed that money. I could have used that check. But God said, no. Yeah, I think Sabatha might have been home with a baby and one on the way was landing on the way. So I could have really used that money for them. But God said, no. So I had to do it. Yeah, right. Amen. <laughs> but I inquired of the Lord. I didn't know eventually I'd be preaching what I'm preaching now. 
but I know what the Lord said then. So before you do something big, you better inquire of the Lord. Amen. Ahab had already disregarded the truth from the prophet before he ever heard it because he wanted validation instead of truth. He didn't want Makai. He didn't want the truth. He wanted validation for what he was feeling. He was feeling like taking Ramoth Gilead. And he needed somebody to tell him to go take it. 2 Chronicles 18 says, And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and do what? Prosper. You know it was money involved, because if he prospers, we all get raises. Go up and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Lying on the Lord. Even when some hear the truth, they still cannot accept it as truth because their lives are set up the wrong way. <laughs> if your life ain't set up right, you can't hear truth. You got to go get under something that caters to the way your life is set up. So if you're going to be a Christian that sings and performs secular music, you can't come to ABC. You got to go to the potter's house. Yeah. You got to go where that's being preached. The mantle conference. So it can get prophesied on you that God is going to use you in the secular arena. Yeah. You might even look up and write for Megan the Stallion and Cardi B. That's secular. Yeah. Some old satanic, sexually explicit cussing music. Oh, God's going to use that. Use you to write that. <laughs> Devil was doing God's music in heaven and got kicked out. He didn't even get, he didn't even get to, to do the secular stuff. I know I'm preaching. Oh, foolish Galatians, the Bible says. Who has bewitched you? Who tricked you that you should not obey the truth? What happened in your life that's causing you to shut the truth out about what you're doing? You know you're wrong. You know it's wrong. You're in wrong. Your situation is all wrong. You know it. So who's tricked you into living that way and keeping things that way? When men like Ahab are emasculated by their wives, they cannot accept truth from the Lord. So Ahab couldn't accept truth because anything God told him, he going to go tell her and she going to change it. You ain't in charge. If God gives them orders, they will forsake them for the desires of their wives. That was Ahab's problem. Ahab, Ahab couldn't do what Micaiah said because Jezebel would challenge it. He had 400 prophets, but Jezebel had thousands of prophets of Baal. Anything Ahab had, Jezebel had more. <laughs> I would have jumped out the window. <laughs> I'm not living this way. I'm tired of you. <laughs> Get manipulated. Can't think, can't have an original thought because it disagrees with what your wife wants. Now you can't hear from God. Can't fashion your home God's way. Yeah, because God ain't speaking through her to you. Anything with two heads is an abomination. And anything with two leaders, one is not necessary. I'm preaching in here and you don't have to like it. But oh, it's the truth. The truth don't change just because you don't want to hear it. Look at her. <laughs> the truth was bothered. Huh? 
Back to the story. So the messenger went and called Micaiah and spoke with him saying, now this is jive. This messenger is one of the jivest people in the Bible. Because he's going to go to the prophet that they just told you was a prophet of the Lord. And he's going to try to, you know, I had a preacher do this. I had a preacher do this. My wife was there. He called me in his office with me and her and he said, gee, Craig, um, I'm going to need you. Um, well, let me just put it this way. Your gay jokes aren't going to work here. I have a church full of homosexuals. I ask for them. I ask God, give me the gays. Give me all the homosexuals. So here's a baby, you know, y'all, I'm from the street. I don't, you know, I, he was a big deal, but I'm, I'm from the street. You know, so if you ain't Shug Knight or somebody, I ain't. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not scared of you. <laughs> he said, oh, and I just asked God, bring them all. Bring all the gays, all from the east, left, from the right. The, the, just, <laughs> just to the right of me, to the left of me. Just bring them. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there being some looking at her like, is this really happening? Remember? So when you get up, it would be good. Nobody's going to laugh. People are going to get up and leave. All of that. So just wanted to let you know before you speak. So, you know, I'm asking under my breath, God, do I go through with this? God said, yeah, go through with it and do what you do, son. Do what you do, son. So I got the mic. You know, I was like, I'm like Morgan Freeman on lean on me. You disappoint me, brother. You done brought me here, and you knew what I was going to do. You knew what I was going to do. I mean, I came out the gate against the homosexuality. I mean, the, almost the third word. God bless you. This is my wife. Homosexuality. And I preached and I preached. And then when I got finished, the altar was full of guess what? People that wanted a change. People that wanted change. Now what if I listened to him? Okay. Behold the words of the prophets. All the prophets said good. They declared good to the king with one assent. That's that harmony, that's that one voice, that unison. They all said it together like I, like I read it, kind of. So he said, let thy word therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs and speak thou good. Now how you going to hymn the prophet up and tell him what to say? And you done went, what was he doing? He was doing something else. You done went and got this man and then going to tell him to say what the rest of, of them are saying. So Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will I speak. I'm not like the rest of them. So whatever God is telling me to say, that's what I'm going to say. Amen. So when he came to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or should I be forbear? You know, he was, because you've been prepped, so you know what to say. And so he said, okay, I'll agree with you. Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. <laughs> he had to mock him. He had to say it like that because the next verse said, the king said to him, how many times will I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? In other words, don't play with me. Tell me the truth, man. So you know he mocked him. <laughs> then he said, well, I did see Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. Who's they shepherd? Him. And the Lord said, they have no master. Who's their master? Him. The king. So he basically just said, I see you dead. And let everyone return. Therefore, every man in his house in peace when you gone, bruh. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, didn't I tell you 
that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil. Maybe it's because you evil. A lying tongue hates those it hurts and a flattering mouth works ruins. Mm. Lion spirits originate in the realm of spirits but come into our realm to operate through people. So lion spirits are spirits. Demon spirits sometimes or sometimes it's just spirits of deception or confusion. And the ones of conception a uh, uh, deception or confusion may have orders from another realm to come down and speak that. Yes, that's right. yes. To test you in many cases. God allows spirits to come and test you. And sometimes they'll come bring you a lie to see if you're going to believe the truth. Somebody, this is too heavy for them, Elder. But it's all Bible what I'm preaching. That's why First John 4 and 1 said, Believe not every spirit, beloved. But do what? Try the spirits to see if they are what? Because many false what? Prophets. Oh, it's all linked together. The lion spirit and the false prophets. Yeah. There was a prophet in the Bible that got a man killed. And he was a prophet of the Lord. But God told a young prophet, go give the word unto him and then leave. And don't eat. Don't sleep, don't stay. And this older prophet said, well, I'm an older prophet. You can eat and stay with me. And he stayed with him. And then that same prophet got a word from the Lord. Uh-oh, wait a minute. My phone's ringing. Wait a minute, but it's so dirty. Wait a minute. Thus saith the Lord, when you leave here, a lion is going to tear you apart because you disobeyed the word of the Lord. Okay, wait a minute. I'm bringing the line back so he can get us both. Because you, man, that's terrible. But sometimes the word comes like that. That's why you got to be rooted and grounded in what you know to be right. People will convince you that wrong is right. You'll start defending wrong to the point to where you can't hear right anymore. That's a lying spirit. Spirit was sent to see what you was going to do. Unfortunately, many desire the prophetic gifting without a true anointing to prophesy. So they are available to speak the words of the lion spirit. Lion spirit can't speak without a body. So it's looking for somebody. And those that want to be deep or want to have a prophetic ministry where they can prophesy on demand all the time. See, sometimes God didn't tell you to say something and you don't have nothing to say. Sometimes you got to be able to say, uh, I don't have nothing to say. Brother, you supposed to be a prophet of the Lord? Well, God ain't said nothing. Of the Lord is, is a part of that preposition. Of, of the Lord. Is that a prepositional phrase? Of the Lord? Yes. Yeah. So, I got to have something from the Lord to say. We've had a couple of Sundays I done got up here. When I know in heroes, got up and said, y'all, I ain't got nothing to say. Don't I do that? If God ain't spoken, I ain't finna, I'm, Hey. But when you're getting paid to do it and somebody done booked you and, and paid you an honorarium, you better have something to say. You better make something up. They bringing you down and you're a renowned prophet and everybody knows you as a prophet and they going to give you a check. You better make something up. What you going to do? Get up there and say, y'all, we're just going to worship. I just came to worship. I just came. You can't sing. Yeah, but we're just going to lift our hands for 45 minutes and just worship. You ain't getting paid. So you got to make stuff up. Oop. God told me, oh, oh, I see a, I see a check number. <laughs> Nobody didn't have checks. <laughs> oh, well, it's a number though. I, you got to make something up. Acts 8, 9. But there was a certain man called Simon who before time in the same city used sorcery, bewitched people of Samaria, giving out that he was some great one, right? Remember him? And then he went and started following the apostles. The Bible said he believed. But then he saw that they was uh, uh, able to pray the gift of the Holy Ghost on people. So he said, I want to buy that. Why did he want to buy it? Because I want to use it for my business. 
They say I'm a great one, so I got to be great all the time. Can I preach in here? Others that are emotionally charged, greedy, angry, and self-centered are prime vessels for the lying spirit to speak through. If you've got an issue that you haven't dealt with, the lying spirit is speaking through you. For sure. Those that seek platforms, likes and views, wealth, all of that are always available for lying spirits. Yeah, they're open so they can get the likes, the views, the traffic, the bookings, the engagements. Yeah. Let's finish this story. Second Chronicles 18 says, Micaiah then said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. Now, Micaiah is about to go somewhere. And he's going somewhere deep. And I, I believe to the core of my being that he was able to see what he saw and hear what he heard because he stood alone. He didn't care what the others were saying. He knew the king hated him. You know, if the king don't like you, you stand a chance of dying every time he calls you. So you, you got to put it in the right perspective. He knew if I say this right here, they probably going to put me in jail, probably going to feed me bread and water until I die, which they did. They had put him in jail after this. But he saw something that none of the other prophets could see. He saw into heaven. This is deep. He said, I saw the Lord sitting up on his throne. <laughs> and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel? Because I'm tired of him. It's time for Ahab to die. So who's going to make him go up to Ramoth Gilead and fall. And one spake saying after this manner and another saying after that manner. These are God's sons and spirits talking. And then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord. Y'all, <laughs> what is this man seeing? Mm-mm. <sighs> A spirit came and stood before the Lord and said, I'll entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? Like, what you going to do? How you going to do that? He said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. They're all available because they're all for sale. So I'll go get on all of them and we're going to lie to him and entice him. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and it's going to work. Go out and do it. <laughs> this is. <laughs> now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil against thee. And Zedekiah, the son of Shaniah, Shanana, came near and slapped him. Slapped him and said, which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And I'm the one speaking for the Lord. These some bold folks. If I was one of them prophets and I'm sitting there and this man just said this and saw it to heaven and saw spirits. If the prophets was over here and Makai was over there, all while he talking. This man just saw something. Oh, this is so deep. Summary! Now listen, this is, this is why Ahab couldn't, he, he just couldn't do it. This, he couldn't do it, Elder, this is why. Ahab would have first had to check his wife, then get rid of all the idols, false prophets, and high places of Baal, then rebuke his crazy children, before he could follow the instructions of the prophet. That's too much. Too much. 
For me to do. <laughs> it's too much. It's, it's, it's too much. It's too much to do. So I just might as well just bring my old prophets and let them just say yes when I ask them stuff. Because look at all I would have to fix and change. And that's some of us. Man, I got a record deal, a contract, I done signed, I done pledged, I done done this, I done, that's just too much. Then I got to go back and tell everybody I was wrong, I got to go back and tell, it's just too much. I'm going to be embarrassed, I'm going to be ashamed, it's just too much. I just, I, so I might as well just stay like this. And people get complacent and stay like that and die. And go to hell. And didn't have to. The fact that he was out of order is the reason he could not hear and did not like the true prophet. His, he preferred the lion voices because they did not require him to fix what was broken. His arrogance and pride would not allow him to alter his home situation. And the fact that he was comfortable being ruled by his wife instead of God made matters worse. Many today are conditioned by social media and televangelism to search for favorable truth. Any truth that is against their plan or their lifestyle preference is considered an enemy trying to block them. They don't have to accept truth anymore. Nobody has to because with the swipe of a finger, they can have another option. This is exactly what Ahab did. He chose what he wanted to hear and denied the real truth, which led to his death and destroyed his entire home in the end. We must never be afraid of the truth or avoid the truth, no matter how it may alter our lives. The truth will preserve us and make us fit into God's plan. How? Perfectly. Lying spirits may give you what you want, but in the end, they will always lead to your destruction. Amen? The end of the story. So the king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah went ahead and went. <laughs> they went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the, the, oh, there's some nuggets in this. So let me, I'm, what time is it? Okay. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, <laughs> this is how jive he is. I will disguise myself and go into the battle, but you wear your robe. Now, why did he say that? So people would think that he was him. So he, gonna dis he know he going to die. Bruh, Micaiah, jive. you can lock him up, <laughs> throw away the key. <laughs> But you ain't going to change that vision he saw. You know better. You know you're going to die. So you're going to try to trick death. Trick God. You try to trick. You, try, you got a cheat code. So the king of Israel disguised himself and they went into battle. Now the king of Aram had commanded the captains of his chariots. So listen, see, here's where the spirit realm comes into it. It's Ahab's time to die. That's what this whole thing was. Ahab stop. Look at somebody say it's Ahab stop to die. There's no way you getting out of it. It's your time to die. So listen to this. The captains told him, fight with nobody else, small or great. We only want one person. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Y'all, this is about one person. I know it's thousands and thousands of us out here. But don't fight with nobody small and nobody great. Only with one. Ahab. Because it's Ahab's time to die. When the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, they said, oh, there he is. It's Ahab. Because he's dressed like a king. <laughs> Ahab somewhere in a disguise with a mustache and a top hat. <laughs> looking like Monopoly man he, he's somewhere just <laughs> y'all like he, he, I'm not even here to fight I'm here to entertain the troops <laughs> so they say it's the king of Israel so they turn to fight against him and Jehoshaphat cried out no I, I'm not him you got the wrong person and the Lord helped him, and God drew them away from him. For when the captain of the chariot saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him, because that's not the one we want. Because it's Ahab's what? Time to die. Now this is it. This is, this is the deepest part. 
a random man drew his bow unknowingly. <laughs> he probably just closed his eyes, bing, shot it in the air. Because the Lord was guiding the arrow, it didn't matter how he shot it. He just, Arrow just turn around eh, like that movie wants it. <laughs> because it was Ahab's what? It's his time to die. So he drew his bow and unknowingly struck the king of Israel between the scale armor and the breastplate. So he said to the driver of the chariot, oh, turn around. Turn around and get me out of this battle. Because I've been wounded. <laughs> They done got me. <laughs> yeah, out of all this fight, the Bible said the battle grew hot that day and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot facing the armians until evening. Then at sunset, what happened? Because it was his time to die. Everyone stand to your feet. You know, I don't, I don't want a diet of lies. And I don't need nobody telling me something to make me feel better about what I'm doing if what I'm doing isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. Amen? So I need truth. I want a diet of truth. The Bible even said that you have to have a love for the truth. And that's what I'm praying for right now. A love for the truth. If that's you, you want to fall in love with the truth. No matter what changes you have to make in your life, I want you to come up. I want truth, just truth, I just, truth. Love for truth. Yeah, no matter how it makes me feel, no matter how it alters, alters my plans, no matter how it might embarrass me, how I might have to eat a little humble pie, may have to go tell some folks I was wrong may have to repent, may have to just whatever. But I want truth, man. I want truth. I don't want to live no life based on untruths. Hallelujah. This is the life we choose, and you only get one of them. And I don't want to live my life avoiding what I know to be right. All for the sake of my own pleasure. Nah. If I got to turn it down, I got to turn it down. If I can't do it, I just can't do it. If I can't go, I can't go. If I can't accept it, I just can't. I want truth. I want what is right. So when the prophet, the lone prophet, maybe the whole world is saying do it, but that one voice from the Lord is saying don't. And I want to be able to connect with that voice and hear that voice and accept that truth. If I could tell you, how many people told me how ridiculously stupid EX Ministries was when I first was starting out? People that were close to me, men that I trusted, told me, bruh, you finna go against all of this? It's dumb. Why would you do that when you could sign the record deal and take care of your family? God wanna bless you. He wanna financially bless you. You're going to turn down millions of dollars and then turn around and talk about the folks that's making it? They're going to say you jealous. I just didn't have nobody to talk to. My wife, but ain't nobody else. They was all telling me, brother, you crazy. So I had to stand up and I had to do it. But I had the power of the Holy Ghost to give me strength 
to follow what was right. And that's what we're praying for right now. That's what you got to have. You can't do it on your own. You're not strong enough. You've already seen that. Not by your strength. It is too much to handle on your own. You got to have the power of the Holy Ghost. So let's pray for that. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you for your word, your truth. Thank you for your biblical accounts, your stories, Father God. We thank you for how they apply to us now and how we can glean so much from them in our current situations. We thank you, Lord, for that. And thank you for this message, Father God. And Lord, it's not to put any prophets on blast or not even to say that they're not accurate ever or that they're just false prophets forever and all of that. I know people label people like that, but maybe they had a bad day, an off day. Maybe that day they were selfish in their agenda. And we just pray that you touch the hearts of those, even the videos I showed, God, that you would help them to not prophesy out of emotion and feeling or for money or for filthy lucre, but God, that they would speak what you tell them to speak if you are speaking through them. Most importantly, God, help us to hear what is right. Open our ears, open our hearts. Come on, lift your hands. Open us up to your truth, God. Our ears, our heart, God. Go behind that barrier. Go over that electrified fence. Go around that barbed wire. All those roadblocks we've put up to do what we want to do, Father God. Remove them and tear them down. Those are altars, and we don't want anything in your way. Help us to do what is right. Help us to line our lives up with your plan, with your truth, so that we, Father God, can live the life you've called us to and not the consequences of lying spirits. Every lying spirit in our life, Father God, reveal it to us. Show it. Show us who it is. Show us who's speaking it. In the name of Jesus, every lying spirit that is tempting us, every lying spirit that is seducing us, every lying spirit, Father God, that is misleading us and misguiding us and deceiving us, Father God, we pray right now that you would remove it out of our lives. Show us who it is, why it is, and we'll cast it away. In the name of Jesus. And help us, Father God, to stay on the right path in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, one of the hardest things in the world, hold up PJ, one of the hardest things is overcoming rejection from a father. Now, I don't know why, but I feel that very, very strong in here. It's leading to all kinds of chaos in your life because you feel rejected by your father. So let me pray for that. Everyone just bow your heads and I don't have to call you up. You know, I, you know. But Father God, we pray right now against fatherly rejection. That father that has rejected their own children, not understanding the consequences of it, not understanding what they're really doing because they're not where they need to be mentally, spiritually, emotionally, whatever. So they are shunning their own seed pushing away their own children, denying their love, denying their, um, denying their biological connection with them even. Father God, we just pray for them right now. Whoever you are in here, we pray, God, that you would heal their hearts and let them know that your word says when your mother and your father reject you, that's when the Lord God will take us up and you will fill the gap and you will be, if they stay the course, not only will you be there, God, but you will bring healing to that situation in the name of Jesus. We believe and pray. Amen.
Amen. We got men in here, had no relationship, some of them no contact with their fathers. And now several of them changed their last names, took their father's name and have a good relationship with them. Is Brandon here? Brandon? Brandon told me a testimony that he just, his father, now when Brandon first came to this ministry, he wasn't talking, to him and his father had no contact. And how old were you, Brandon? He 30. And just last week, or a couple of weeks ago, was his birthday. And he said his father got him a cake, balloons. He's one of the ones that changed his name of his whole family, healed that relationship. And he said that was the first time he celebrated his birthday with his father like that. And that was powerful. And that's what this ministry is for. So hold on. Look, hold on. Don't let the devil make you quit. You hold on. Brandon found his wife still having kids. It's a whole row over there. They just wilding, wilding out. Still having them. He's so happy he just having kids. But they found his wife in the ministry. Now him and his father have a good relationship. And it's just changed his life. He changed his name and some others. It's important that these things happen in here. Because without that reconciliation, without you dealing with things, you won't hear truth. Certain truths you'll have to shut out. Because they go against what you won't do. Amen. So whoever I was praying that for, hold on, hang on. It will get better. We've seen it get better. It's going to get better. Amen. Amen. All right. Hug somebody and say it's going to get better. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 It will get better. It will get better. That's where it starts. God felt your pain this morning. He felt your pain. He felt what you were feeling and gave me that word. And that ain't no lying prophet. That's the truth speaking. Hallelujah. 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 